All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're back for another Photoshop tutorial, taking a look at how you can create your very own double exposure effect at home. And so what is a double exposure? It's where somebody takes an old analog camera with film and they expose a frame partially, and then they use that same frame of film to expose it again with like mountains or some type of nature, like forests, stuff like that. And then it creates a cool effect that's kind of like two characters mashed together, kind of like this. Hence the name double exposure, but we can do it a little bit easier using Photoshop. So we're gonna recreate this image here today. What we're gonna need is a picture of any type of like portrait of somebody or like a side on view of that person. They could even be front on, but you gotta have like a nice HD picture of someone that you can chop out and then use for this tutorial. And then you need some type of picture of nature. I live in Colorado. I love the mountains. So I'm going to use a picture of some Rocky Mountains right here. And then we're going to hit Control N and we're going to create a new document, 1920 by 1080. I kind of work in this by default a lot of the time because I do a lot of thumbnails for YouTube videos. And then we're going to go back here and select this lady by hitting Control A and Control C to copy it. Then we'll just paste it in here with Control V. And then we'll just transform that, Control T, and we'll make this about the height of our canvas. And so what we wanna do now is we wanna select this woman so that we can use a mask to cut her out of her default background of like whatever this gray wall is. And you got some options to do this. You can select with color range, the background and then once you've got just the background you can hit OK and then invert the selection but I'm actually going to use W to select the quick select tool and I'm actually going to use the select subject button since I've got a newer version of Photoshop and that does a pretty good job of selecting just this woman even including her eyelash here and then a lot of her hair then we're going to hit this button down here a little square with a circle in it to add a layer mask. And because I had a selection, it'll automatically mask out the stuff that I don't have selected. So she's the one that comes to the forefront. Now, it's kind of touchy when you use select subject. It kind of grabs some wispy bits of her hair. So I'm going to select the mask and hit the B for brush tool. I'm gonna make sure it's the flow is up to 100%. I'm gonna go ahead and use black with a hard brush in order to kind of remove some of the crazier hair that doesn't look like it's attached to anything. Kind of makes it look like I made a bad selection really fast and we want to avoid that. So we'll just kind of cut out different pieces of it that look like they're going on an adventure regardless of the rest of the hair. And then we'll go from there. Let's kind of trim up a little bit. And that looks pretty good. And the rest of these lines are pretty solid. There's not like any missing parts of her jaw or anything of her neck or her dress. So that looks good. The next thing we wanna do is we're gonna go back over to our mountain picture, select it, and then copy it. And then we're gonna just paste this on top of our model. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make it slightly transparent so that we can kinda see her through it. And then we're gonna decide where we kinda want her head to appear compared with like the mountain. And so I think since the shape of her hair is kind of goes to a point right here in the center, I'll kind of line up the mountain a little bit with that. And then from there, we'll just make that full opacity again. I'll hit control T to transform it again. And then I'm just going to make it the whole height of the actual picture, because that just makes it easier to work with when we don't have any gaps near the edges that might need some stuff going on that we have to mess with later. And then I'm gonna hold control and select this little mask from the previous layer, which will outline our, our subject so that she can then create a mask on our mountain by hitting the same mask button. And then boom, now we have the shape of our figure, of our subject, masked out with the, the nature picture of the mountain. And that's, that's looking good. So the next thing we need to do is, if we go back to our reference picture that I was putting together before, 
Now we need to blend the whole thing together. And I'll, I'll even like create sort of a bleeding out of the figure effect where it looks like nature is bleeding out of her here at the top near her hair by changing the background color. So let's just start, let's put a background on this and then let's just start blending together our figure with the rest of the environment. So let's create a new layer and drag it to the bottom. I'm gonna hit, sh or what is it, Shift F5. And I'm gonna put like a white background behind her just to start out with. We'll change that in a minute. And then I'm going to find our mountain picture. I'm gonna set the blend mode right here for this layer to lighten. And as you can see, it already kind of did a nice job of popping through some of her more prominently lit features to the front so it appears through our like forest and landscape going on here. And so I'm gonna select the mask for our mountain and I'm gonna hit B to bring our brush back up and I'm gonna select a soft brush, the soft round, and then I'm gonna put the flow you can do flow or opacity in this situation. It'll all do about the same thing. I'm gonna throw it down to 37 because that's what I was messing with before. And what this is going to do is it's gonna let us slowly blend her face back into the portrait without just drawing like a hard, harsh line by having a full strength brush, if that makes sense. It's a way to gently brush things back in without completely overwhelming the image with hard lines where we don't want them. And so what I want to do is I like to have a lot of the main subject have like a lot of their face back into the image, kind of ending off just a little bit above her eyebrows going into her forehead. And then let's kind of like leave it here at the cheekbone so that she kind of just pops out there a little bit. And then from here, it's just kind of what you, whatever you like. I mean, I like to kind of add a little bit more of her dress back into the picture because I feel like that kind of adds a little contrast, like you've got like a highlight of the figure bleeding back into nature. So she kind of pops out a little bit. It's that more human aspect meeting nature. And however you interpret that is just completely up to you. I'm gonna kind of soften the edge over here on the backside of her hair. And then I'm actually going to hit X to alternate my colors so that white is in the foreground, which will start to reveal things in our mask. And I'll start to kind of like paint in her hair. But you might notice, unlike our picture over here, when I try to blend her hair back into the image, it's not working. So the answer is it's not working because it doesn't have the right color in the background layer to latch onto. So we're gonna do that. I'm going to just click on our background layer and I'm gonna use our eyedropper tool with eye to select this kind of like light teal blue right here in the background of our clouds. And then I'm gonna hit Shift F5 and I'm just gonna grab the foreground color from the contents pull down. I'm gonna hit OK to just paste that in there. As you can see now, if I grab this other mask, we can start to paint back in some of the nature that had fallen out of the picture before. And my goal here, the way that I set this up and picked these photos, is that this is going to allow us to paint the nature kind of flowing back out of our figure and into the picture from either side, and then fading to nothing as it goes down. This way it's kind of like a breaking the fifth wall situation where everything is kind of flowing back into the picture from her mind, from her imagination, from getting reconnected with nature so to speak. That's kind of what I'm going for anyway. And I think that looks pretty good. That's basically the whole of making a double exposure image is just taking two images, making a nice cutout, and then blending them together so it looks artistic. You can do this with pretty much any combination of photos. You can do it with a couple, with a trio, with a whole group of people. You just have to carefully blend it together and play with where you want things to blend forward and back. So the other details that you could play around with before you're done with this is a lot of times when I've seen double exposure images made, they like to use Control Shift U to pull out the color, the saturation from the main subject, this woman here. And you can do that, that's completely fine. Uh, I actually like making a lot of double exposure pictures 
with the skin tone intact because I mean there's no reason not to we don't pull the the colors out of the picture in the background in an actual double exposure uh, image if one part of the image has color so would the other but you can take it out of there as well you can just remove all of the color tones and then you can add just above that image you can throw in like a photo filter to add kind of like a human skin tone coloration to the whole image or you can also use like a gradient blend over top of it to achieve the same effect but personally i think leave the skin tone in it's who the figure is and it brings some more life to your image so that'll be it for this one ladies and gentlemen i've been your host larry this has been a brief look at how you can create a double exposure image inside of Photoshop. It really just comes down to blending together two images with nice crisp lines with your selections and making masks and then blending in some nature on top of them. So if you, I hope you found this helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a thumbs up uh, and consider subscribing. I've got some more of these Photoshop tutorials coming your way along with some looks into like Illustrator, Premiere, and maybe some other software that I use to edit stuff with. And until next time, I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to do those likey, subscribe things, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.